Ted, let's talk about Netflix India. Uh, I know that India has always been a priority market for Netflix. Yes. But the general perception seems to be that it's been a bit of a hit and miss for the service here. Uh, and I've asked you about this before. And you had said that, look, this is a trial and error phase. Um, to match audiences with stories is very difficult. Yeah. It's very fluid. And we're committed to getting better and better. Yep. Now, in January, Netflix India had Trial by Fire, which is a superb piece of storytelling. Uh, you. Do you think the team is already better and better? I think they're better every day. And I do think from the, you say it's hit and miss. I think when you enter into a new market, sometimes it's miss, 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 hit, 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 hit. And I think that's, you know, like, and, and what I figured out early on when we started launching uh, in various countries is you didn't learn much in one country that was helpful in the next country. You have to be there. You have to be on the ground and you have to understand consumer taste. You have to understand the culture. You have to understand the, his, the industry. You have to understand creators in that country. What are the challenges to getting movies made and series made? And in the case of India, remember, I think India's got this beautiful, rich uh, cinema culture and not that much around television at that time when we first got here. So Sacred Games was our kind of early attempt to say, well, what if you took um, the principles of cinema uh, and infused them into television? And would the, would the Indian audiences love that? And, you know, that was our first show out of the gate. And now you look going forward, uh, la we're, we've now produced 100 original projects in India. Last year alone, 28. Uh, and then to your, what you were saying earlier, just, that, you know, we're only in February and we've already released um, uh, Trial by Fire, uh, 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 say, the Romantics. The Romantics. I was just going to talk about this great documentary we just did in class. Uh, and so it's been for us, I think that these are, uh, and it's early February, it's only early February, that the slate of films and series that we have coming up for the next year are stronger than we've ever had. So this idea of really getting into the, into the rhythm and the groove of local taste and local desire, I think we're better at that than we ever were. And I do think that why we can get there is our team who runs India run it from India. Um, a lot of, I think, uh, uh, companies who try to run India out of California <laughs> get frustrated early on because they just don't learn anything. Uh, and here our team really does understand the local culture and the local storytellers. And they themselves are part of the local audience, which gives us a large advantage. And that's why we've invested so heavily in our, in, uh, not just in production in India, but we have 250 people in an office in Mumbai. We have an office here in Delhi. Uh, people who really care about, um, you know, making great content in India. And of course, last year, the big success stories uh, were Gangubai and RRR for Netflix. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Incredible. I mean, honestly, Ted, I've never seen that much euphoria around an Indian film like there was for RRR. Well, look, I think what's really special about those two movies this year, um, every time, once in a while, there's an inflection point in a change in, in distribution or a change in storytelling or a change in appetite. Um, being in Los Angeles during uh, award season, uh, this year, RRR and uh, Gungabai were in the discussion deeply. Everyone was talking about this. There are 180 movies to watch on the voting site, uh, and two that got watched a lot were these two movies. Most, and then they get found out because they saw them on Netflix. So those movies kind of get pushed into the culture on Netflix, and then people start talking about, hey, did you see this movie? Did you see this movie? And RRR, for many people who I know, may have been the first Indian movie they ever saw. And for them, it was such a wild journey that they want more. They're going to want more. The way that Squid Game did that for Korean content around the world, again, on Netflix. So it's not that you, uh, it's impossible to have a global hit. It's very rare. And you need to have a distribution platform like Netflix, and you need to have a system of choosing like Netflix to help surface things that you may not know you're going to like, but we do. <laughs> and we could put that movie in front of you, and it's, it was an enormous success on Netflix, RRR, and I think it's been, uh, even you know, the director acknowledged as much when he was nominated for the Oscar, uh, or for the, nom for the Golden Globes, for the, yeah, yeah. Um, that they, most people in the world found it on Netflix. Yeah. But practically speaking, what do you need to By do? By the way, I should I include those two, but I forgot. Um, Elephant Whisperer, which is actually nominated for the Academy Absolutely. Award. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, that's the, on Netflix For too. short documentary. And it's our second nomination for short documentary, both films from India. 
uh, period, end of sentence, which won the Oscar a few years ago, and then Elephant Whispers, which is nominated this year. How wonderful. Yeah. How wonderful. What, practically speaking, what's the way to consistently have local content break out globally? Um, make it work locally. There, there is no, you cannot reverse engineer a global show. Uh, the things that work globally are the things that are the most authentic local. Um, uh, Squid Game from Korea was every bit Korean television and, Korean, and a hybrid of Korean television and Korean cinema. Uh, and it worked first and foremost in Korea and then blew up around the world. And I think that's true of, of all of our shows that have worked globally, is that they first and foremost uh, were loved by the local audience. Did one of the most mysterious things about the streaming world is, of course, numbers, <laughs> right? Because so little is revealed. Uh, so, you know, there are all these subscription numbers that do the rounds. And if you look at those, then yes, Netflix is lagging. But if you look at um, third party apps, you know, uh, if you look at App Annie or Comscore numbers, in fact, Netflix leads because, like you were saying, engagement is so high. It's 74% right. for Netflix, whereas the rest of the platforms are declining. So I know you already addressed this in a little bit, but is that then your measure of success? Uh, and how does Netflix India rack up? It's absolutely the measure of success. It has to start with engagement. Do people care enough to spend their viewing time with you? Do they, are, are they spending their screen time with Netflix? And so that's why that engagement metric is so fine. It's so important. In India, like I said, we've had the best year of our existence in India. Uh, we grew engagement from in India 30%. So our watching our content watching grew by 30% last year in India. Our, our revenue grew by 25% in India. Again, wouldn't have happened if it wasn't tied to that engagement lift. So a lot of... Um, Measurement, you know, if you're trying to steer around subscriber number and, and they make nice headlines, but they're not a real business metric. You know, does that behind that subscriber number, is their engagement, is their revenue, is their profit? With Netflix, yes.